In this video, we're going to calculate the average position of the particle in a box given its wave function. So in order to calculate the average position, we need to use a concept called an expectation value. So if we have some property A, we denote the expectation value of property A, or its average value, by this type of sideways bracket here. And that equals the integral from minus infinity to positive infinity of x, if you're talking about a one-dimensional particle with position x, psi star, complex conjugate of psi, the wave function, the operator for that property a, and then times the wave function again. So the operator for that property A is going to act on the wave function. We're going to multiply times the complex conjugate of the wave function. And then we're going to integrate over the entire domain here. And that will give us the average value of what this operator is. So for position, we have just the property x, average position, average value of x. It's going to be the integral of. And in this case, since uh, the wave function is 0 outside of 0 and L, we can just integrate from 0 to L and save ourselves the issue there of integrating things that are going to be 0 anyway. And we can plug in here uh, the wave function, which I've got up here. Our solutions for a given n are square root of 2 pi, square root of 2 over L times sine n pi x over L. Okay, then the operator for position is just multiplying by the, by the value x. So multiplying by the variable x is going to be what acts on our wave function. So that's just a standard multiplication. And in this case, the wave function is real, so we didn't have to worry about complex conjugate. This value is real for all x. In the future, we will have to worry about that if we have square root of minus 1 in there anywhere. But for now, we don't. And again, n pi x over l. OK, so all we got to do is calculate that integral, and then we're done. So moving forward with that, we can pull out this square root of 2 over l, this square root of 2 over l, and get 2 over l. Integrating again from 0 to l. Sine of n pi x over l times sine n pi x over l times x. So we're just going to have x times sine squared n pi x over l. OK, now this is a somewhat involved integral relative to the standards of very simple things. So we are just going to uh, look that up, something up similar in a table. So the integral of x sine squared kx where k here is just n pi over l. This integral of x sine squared kx, according to the magic of integral tables, is going to be x squared over 4 minus 1 over 8k cosine 2kx. minus 1 over 4k x sine 2kx. OK, so we're basically, our integral, we're going to be evaluating this from 0 to L. And for our specific case, um, this cosine term here, if we, if we substitute in k equals n pi over L, and we're trying to evaluate at the ends 0 and L, as we are for this case, this is going to be 0 at both ranges, because 2n pi L over L is going to give us cosine of 0. And then it's going to be the same value at, at the next end. And then the sine is going to be similarly. It's going to cancel out for both ends. So I'm going to save us some writing time and just show that these are 0. You can work that out yourself as well and show that that's the case. So. That will then simplify to 2 over L 
then we're going to have x squared over 4 evaluated at 0 and L. And when we evaluate this at L, we have L squared over 4. And when we evaluate it at 0, we have 0. So we're just going to get 2 over L times L squared. Let's do a different color here since we're starting to get in the way. Let's do green there. We have this equals 2 over L times L squared over 4. So our final value is that the average value of x equals L over 2. So the average position of the particle is always right in the middle of the box. And that makes sense because we know that psi star psi is the probability of where the particle is going to be. And for any value of n, you have an equal amount of that function on the left side and on the right side. So the average position where x is going to be is always just going to be in the middle of the box. And that's going to be the case for pretty much anything where we have a symmetric potential like this. The, the potential energy function is symmetric relative to L over 2. But we can go on from here and we can calculate the value, the expectation value of x squared. So what, does the, what is the average square of x? And for that, it's the same thing. It's just the integral minus infinity to infinity, psi star psi. But the operator this time is just x squared. Any operator, any operator squared is just that operator acting twice, dx. And then for this case, substituting in those values, we're going to have once again an integral where we have 0 to L because wave function is 0 outside of those regions square root of 2 over L sine n pi x over L x squared sorry second parenthesis second close parenthesis there 2 over L sine n pi x over L. So now this is the same integral as before but um, with a slightly different twist. So we have x squared equals and we can again pull out the 2 over L sorry meaning a dx there. We can again pull out integral of 0 to L and then dot 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 this integral which we're going to write up here. So we're going to have the integral of x squared sine squared kx that we're going to need to solve, again, where k is e being equal to n pi over l. And then this integral, if we look this up in a table somewhere, we are going to get um, several terms. And for the sake of brevity, I'm not going to write it all out because I want these videos to be relatively short, but in the end what you'll see is that if you plug everything in at, plug everything in and uh, crunch through the meat of the algebra, what you'll end up getting back is you can factor it into this form. L squared one-third minus one over two n squared pi squared. Okay, so that's the, ex sorry, this is x squared, the expectation value. So that's the expectation value of x squared. So that's how far, on average, you expect x squared to be. So now we can discuss a concept, which we've discussed a little bit earlier, about uncertainty. So the quantity sigma squared is called the variance. And that's, if you've heard that quantity in statistics, that's the same quantity that we're talking about here. So the variance is the expectation value of x squared minus, and subtle difference here, the expectation value of x squared. So notice that the square is on the outside. That would be the square of this value. So this difference is called the variance. And then we're going to see that the square root of this is going to be the standard deviation of x, or the uncertainty in x. So if we look at 
sigma squared x equals, well, we have L squared here. Then we have for this, this term, we have 1 third minus 2 over 2n squared pi squared. And then for x, the average value of x is L over 2. So squaring that, we get L squared over 4. Since we've already factored out the L squared here, I'm going to pull that out, and we're subtracting this x squared here. So you should be able to convince yourself this is the same as putting in a minus 1 fourth in here. So for the final result for that, 1 third minus a fourth is a twelfth. So we will get 1 twelfth minus 1 over 2n squared pi squared. And that is all times L squared. Okay, so that's the variance. And then the quantity that is of probably more interest to us going forward is the uncertainty in x, sigma x, the standard deviation of x. How much does x deviate from its average value on average? And then that is just the square root of the variance. So sigma x is going to be taking the square root of L squared. We get an L. And the rest of that is going to be under a square root. We have 1 12th minus 1 over 2n squared pi squared. OK, so now we've just used the wave function to calculate some properties of the particle. We know that the particle, on average, is at L over 2. It's in the middle of the box. On average, its square position, its position squared, is this quantity here. And it's uncert the uncertainty in its position is this quantity here, sigma x. So it, it sorry, again, need to cancel out this square. This needs to just be L. So the uncertainty in its position depends on the length of the box. And that makes sense. As we have a bigger and bigger box, it's more and more uncertain where the particle is. And then that uncertainty is going to change as uh, n, the quantum number, changes. As we go to higher and higher solutions, we are going to get uh, slightly more uncertainty until we approach the value of the square root of 1 12th here. So this is just an intro into how we can use uh, operators and expectation values to calculate average quantities for certain uh, quantum mechanical systems and how the wave function can be used to figure out what the properties of a particle are.